So I got a free pattern situated for a key clip for your belt. There's quite a few of these out there. This is kind of my take on it. I hope you like it. And I'd like to thank the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal for sponsoring my channel. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check out the website, I suggest doing so. They do a lot of shows where they have a trade show where they have a lot of booths and things set up. And they also have like a competition with a lot of work and they have people teaching classes. If you put my initials TAB into the promotional code, when you sign up for a subscription to their magazine, you'll get an extra issue. So I thought about doing another giveaway and I figured why not give away one of my leather flat caps. I have a lot of requests for these. Nice lining. So in order to win this, you need to comment on one of my two new videos, which will be this key clip or my new snowshoes straps. So comment on one of those. Make sure you like both of them and subscribe to my channel so that you'll be alerted when a video comes out announcing the winner for this flat cap. Dying this the way I usually dye my parts. What I first did with these slots is I punched each side with a 5 16 inch hole punch and then I cut each part out. I can clean them up after I sew this stuff together here. This part here is going to be punched the same as these other holes. I'm going to use a 1 16 inch hole punch. Punch those holes and then cut that slit. That's where the hook comes through. These two and these three are for the rivets. So make sure those holes correspond to the size of your rivets before you punch those out. And the reason there's three here is so that when this wraps around, it's only gonna use the top two. But if you accidentally flip this part around, that way you don't have to worry about what side's the top. This is the back panel, whichever way you sew this on. And all the holes and everything are exact mirror image, whichever way you flip it. So you don't have to worry about that at all. So I'll punch all these holes out, cut these slits, punch the holes out for the size of my rivets. Actually, the rivets I'm using, I'm going to be using a 3 32nd inch hole punch for my rivets. So I'll do that, punch all these, cut these out. And what you can do too is when you're cutting this front one out, if you want to cut it out real clean right on the line, do that. And then this one, you can cut just a little bit bigger. That way you can trim this one after everything's sewn together and you'll get those edges matching up just right. And even if you don't glue these two parts together, as long as those edges are matched up just right, it'll look pretty good. I have a lot more tips and things in my other videos, but I will mention when you start punching the stitching holes out, start towards the middle of each part and work your way to the outside because it's held down best around the outside. That way as you're punching these out, the paper and the tape will get stretched out a little bit. Everything will stay aligned as much as possible and I suggest putting tape over the entire thing so that everything is a little more rigid. The paper doesn't rip and move around quite as much. And this actually pops out a little bit easier too. One other thing I do while I'm punching these parts out, this hole punch is gonna be spitting these little pieces out. So instead of having it turn towards this hole, because then they keep spitting into it and eventually get under here, I have it turned away so that it keeps them out of there and I don't have to get under there and brush it these little pieces out nearly as much if I'm not sending them under there. Okay, I got the three parts cut and dyed. I'm probably gonna sand and trim the inside of the big belt holes. And I did cut the back part a little bit bigger than the front part. So after I sew it, I can trim it and sand it and then I'll dye the edges and things. I use just a hole punch for all the stitching holes. I will have a separate video showing the difference between just punching it with a hole punch and punching them with like a stitching chisel. And I did two colors of thread, dyed leather and undyed leather. So check that video out if you're interested in seeing the differences in that. I think next time I make one of these, I'm gonna use a stitching chisel to make those angled holes. It's just a little bit harder to situate the needle and you got to be a little bit more accurate just so everything works just right but uh, punching out with just a hole punch gives you just a little bit of play so if your everything isn't lined up perfectly it'll still be just fine but both are pretty good so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stitch around both of these openings and then I'm going to put two rivets in there 
whichever side ends up being the top. So that's the bottom because it's got the two slits. So this is the top. So then I'll put two rivets right here. That way this loop will be able to flip around and hit them two top rivets. Make sure all the holes are lined up. Then I'll stick this in my stitching pony and go all the way around. I like to tie knots in between layers whenever I can, but you can back stitch, do this however you want. What I do is just get up to the last stitch and come in between the two layers here. tie that into a knot, put a little dab of glue on, and then just give it a tap with a mallet or something to flatten it. Okay, I got both of those sewn and the two rivets. Make sure these two slits will be on the bottom. So when you flip this, this is the top. The two holes on top or what have it. And I got that extra hole just in case you sew that on backwards. Then you don't have to undo the one you sew. So this is the front, this is the top. You're gonna to be looking at the flesh side. And you're gonna find where that center is. It's gonna be right there. So I'm gonna start on this first hole that's off of the edge of that. And then I'm gonna go all the way around and when I get to this side, I'm gonna sew that on and backstitch. That way I'm not fighting this as I'm sewing everything else and it doesn't get in the way and thread get caught on it. So what I'll do is I'll throw this in my stitching pony and go around the perimeter and I'll come right back when I'm ready to sew that part. So I sew it all the way around and those last holes that are open are all the holes that this is going to be attached with. So now I'm going to go across that and over the edge into that first hole that's off right here. I'm going to backstitch and then come back again and stop about halfway and cut the threads and they'll be hidden in there. all the way across can put this in your stitching pony too get it good and tight so I came off the end and then I started back but I'm actually kind of come back one more time off the end here will be really held on there good and then that way it'll match because I'm going to come off this side and then come back again about halfway or a little more. So I'm backstitched all the way across and I'm going to come off the edge of that again. I'm actually going to come back to like a halfway, maybe right here, just one stitch past halfway, pull them in 
and snip them on the inside here because then that'll all be covered up once that's bent around there. This is really locking those stitches in. So I came across, went through that twice, and then came back all the way off the edge here and now I'm working back and stopping in here and then I'll clip the threads that'll be enough to hold everything really well so I'll just come back through one last time here and I'll clip both of these threads on this side will be hidden. But before I put that clip on there and come around the back and attach this to here, I'm going to trim and finish these edges and trim inside of here a little bit. I left a little bit on this back one on these inside parts too. But if you cut those inside ones real accurate or better yet if you have a punch, don't cut those out at all until after the fact then punch them out together both layers. So I'll trim around here sand it, even that up. I'm going to round these corners a little bit too. Dye the edges, put it through my burnisher. Alright, so I got sewn around the outside here. I came across, went through that last hole over the edge twice, came back to this side over the edge, and then came back again and stopped in here, pulled the threads to this side and clipped them. Don't need any knots, that's going to hold really well. I'm going to trim these edges, make them flush, sand them a little, sand, probably trim the corner a little and then sand it rounded, dye the edges, put it through my burnisher, then I'll come back here, I'll show you how you put the clip on, and then we'll rivet the back of this around the back side. Probably cut, trim inside of these a little bit too and re-dye those. I left the back a little big there so I can adjust it, but if you have the punch, Better yet, just leave the layers together and once they're sewn up, punch it in one swipe. Or if you trim them just right, they'll line up real well. Yeah, I went around the outside perimeter with my knife, got the edges all cleaned up, and then I just clipped the corners a little bit. Now I'll come back and sand them. Probably use like a 400 grit sandpaper or something. Now, since uh, the edges are all done, I dyed them, and then I used my edging solution. I do have a video on how I dye my stuff, how I do my edging and stuff, if you want to check that out. But to get this hook on, I like to give a little spray to this so that it bends. And a little spray to the front. Especially those two cuts right there. So it doesn't leave watermarks. I rub it around right away. But what I'm going to do is use a modeling spoon or something and get underneath that and stretch it up. You can even kind of burnish this edge down a hair and then this so it shouldn't be too bad getting that through there if you open that up a little bit this through the end of that and I made it so it's pretty snug and if you're using a clip that looks like it's got about that much width or thickness you'll be alright with just using these holes but you might want to just mark these on this flap here and then wait until you put your clip on if you're unsure of the thickness of that part right there but I have it set pretty tight and you can stretch that out 
water will help too. See, I haven't sealed any of this yet, so I'm just making sure I rub those water droplets so it doesn't make leave water stains. As you can see, that's pretty snug. That's how I want it though. And I'll put these two caps on those rivets and set them. And if you're having issues with these rivets popping out constantly, every once in a while I'll have one pop. But if I really don't want to have to deal with that, I'll put a little dab of two-part epoxy. Glue doesn't always set because it's so sealed in there. But that two-part epoxy, once you mix it up, it's going to harden no matter what you do. So if you really want to make sure, but then it makes it harder to replace them if you need to. Although getting in there is going to be hard anyways. You're going to have to strip stitches and stuff. So that's another reason you might not want to glue these together. If you got to replace those rivets, you're going to want to strip the stitches and get up in there. All right, I set those two rivets. And what I did is I just set this on the table and used a slightly concaved and just hammered them down like this. You know, if you want to cut a piece of wood or something so this sits in there, you could. But I didn't have any problem doing it that way. You could also use like a Chicago screw or something like that. My only concern with those is you might have issues if this is the side with the groove on it maybe that groove will scratch a belt or something but there you go